So there's so much being talked about at the moment with the imminent Ethereum Sport ETF from the US and now the much talked about filed Solana Sport ETF which has not been granted yet is still at application level. I think it's Banek who did. There's a lot being talked about at the moment whether the Ethereum Sport ETF will live up to the Bitcoin Sport ETF that launched earlier in the year. Yes, what I think and it's all contained within this video. But before I start guys, it's fd for h 5tv Today bring you a comparison or what I think will be the key differences between these two and at the end of the video I'll also share with you which one I think will come out on top between these two sport ETFs. Now my assessment will turn out to be different to yours. That's fine. These are just assessments. Once the results are in we can then compare notes and see who was out by what by how much. I'm willing to learn. That's why I do this video. I'm trying to share what I know and through comments and through more research I keep learning. So if you want to know our position as to which one I think will come out on top. At the moment we are just looking at the sport ETF ETF versus the Bitcoin Sport ETF. Those are the two we're looking at. We won't cover much about Solana because at this moment in time, we don't even know if it's going to be granted. But before I jump into this video, guys, please note that what I'm going to share with you in this video is just for educational as well as entertainment purposes. Do your own research. This is not financial advice. If you are from the UK, do not watch this video. It's not intended for UK audiences. Now, that said, maybe we may want to start the video by actually covering what a sport exchange traded fund or ETF as it is commonly known in the US that is because in the UK we use different descriptions. What is it for those who are new to the concept? Because people might be interested because these two Bitcoin Sport ETF and Ethereum Sport ETF they are going to be market drivers going forward because these are going to bring in a different cohort of investors or players big and small. So it is quite important that these are covered. Okay, and you can't pick a winner, but you can only speculate which one is going to come out on top. So for starters, a sport exchange traded fund or ETF for cryptocurrencies is an investment vehicle that holds the actual underlying asset. So it means if it's a sport Ethereum ETF, if you buy one share, it represents the equivalent in Ethereum. If you buy enough, it depends how the shares are split. Because some of the shares, for example, if it's Bitcoin, they will split it. I think the BlackRock was about $29 or $30 per share. So if you want to buy a full Bitcoin, you go to buy as many shares that are equivalent to the exact Bitcoin price at the time you buy the shares. I think that's how it works. But the benefit is you can also buy a fraction of a Bitcoin through that share. Anyway, so these ETFs allow investors to gain exposure to the price movements of these cryptocurrencies without directly owning them, providing an accessible and regulated way to invest in crypto assets or digital assets. We'll start with the comparison of the spot Bitcoin ETF versus the Ethereum port ETF. So let's start with the underlying assets. Let's start with Bitcoin, for example. I know most of you know what Bitcoin is, but I doubt that many people have actually read the Bitcoin white paper. No, that is compulsory to learn about it, but it's good to know what it's all about. Okay, even if you don't believe in it, it's a good thing to have a fundamental understanding of where this ecosystem has come from. And Bitcoin started all this with the entity or a group person known as Satoshi Nakamoto. So Bitcoin was launched in 2009, like I said, by an anonymous entity known as Satoshi Nakamoto, and it is primarily primarily viewed as a store of value and digital gold. With Maxis, they throw all sorts of synonyms and descriptors to what Bitcoin could be. And it remains the most well-known and valuable by market capitalization. Some of the use cases for Bitcoin range from being primarily a digital currency and a store of value. Bitcoin's use case revolves around being a decentralized alternative to traditional fiat currencies and is also a hedge against inflation. As for Ethereum, it was launched in 2015 following a proposal by Vitalik Buterin and it is a decentralized platform that enables smart contracts and decentralized applications or dApps. It extends beyond being a cryptocurrency as it acts as a platform for various blockchain-based applications or dApps. Use cases for Ethereum, well, it serves as both a digital currency and also as a platform for decentralized applications or dApps, smart contracts, token issuance, for example, the ERC-20 tokens. Its broader functionality supports decentralized finance or DeFi, non-fungible tokens or NFTs and other innovations. So Ethereum Ethereum, you could say, is closer to the internet than the Bitcoin network. The Ethereum network is closer to the internet than the Bitcoin network. What about market position and adoption? Well, starting with Bitcoin ETF, as the first and largest cryptocurrency, Bitcoin has established itself as a leader within the digital currency market. Its dominant market capitalization reflects its widespread recognition and adoption, widely adopted by both retail and institutional investors as a hedge against economic uncertainty and inflation. Numerous financial applications 
tokens and services have been built around Bitcoin, including futures contracts and ETF. Yeah, we are talking of spot Bitcoin ETF. So its main tool here or its main use case as far as the wider mass adoption is concerned, it's like it's going to be an investment vehicle or trading vehicle. Now let's look at Ethereum. Ethereum is the second largest cryptocurrency and is the leading altcoin after Bitcoin by market capitalization. Its unique position as a platform for decentralized applications gives it a distinct advantage over Bitcoin in terms of functionality and use cases. Okay, some people say that's debatable, but to an extent, I think that's a fact because you can't argue that Ethereum can compete with Bitcoin for DApps. I don't think so. I think Ethereum is way ahead of everything else. It's actually the leading smart contract platform where Bitcoin is also involved. And as far as adoption is concerned, Ethereum is rapidly growing within the DeFi space, NFTs and other blockchains, although likes of Solana and Nier and all the other blockchains are making a headway in the right direction. But I think Ethereum is still leading. Ethereum's versatility attracts developers and businesses looking to build and deploy smart contracts and dApps. What about on the technology and ecosystem front? Well, this one is going to be interesting, isn't it? Starting with Bitcoin. Bitcoin's blockchain is secure and robust, but it is relatively limited in its functionality compared to that of Ethereum. Bitcoin's scripting language is not Turing complete, which means it restricts its ability to execute complex smart contracts. As far as the ecosystem is concerned, Bitcoin is primarily focused on financial transactions as well as as a store of value. While the ecosystem is extensive, it is mainly concentrated around financial products like wallets, exchanges, and payment systems. So if you are looking to build a business around payment systems, you know you got Strike, they've done that. Exchanges, we know Coinbase and so forth, they are known as the Bitcoin exchange, even though they sell other tokens or they are in market for other tokens and coins and also wallets. Now, Ethereum, the technology one. Ethereum blockchain is highly versatile, supporting Turing complete smart contracts. That is a key difference between Ethereum and Bitcoin. This allows developers to create a wide range of decentralized applications. And as far as the ecosystem is concerned, that is the Ethereum ecosystem, it is vast and diverse, encompassing different protocols, NFT marketplaces, decentralized exchanges or DEXs, and many more. The ongoing transition to Ethereum 2.0 aims to address scalability and energy efficiency, further strengthening its technological foundation. But I think that list of DEXs, decentralized exchanges, just imagine money markets being built on top of Ethereum. That is actually a reality because we're already doing of the it just for crypto assets but you can tokenize anything and market it via dex 24 7 you don't need this monday to friday 9 to 4 whatever it is it will be 24 7 which is brilliant which means you don't have to worry about time differences or time zone what about the regulatory environment how is it going to affect the progress of both the bitcoin etf spot etf as well as the ethereum spot etf let's start with bitcoin then. bitcoin's regulatory landscape is well established compared to that of ethereum okay we know that but ethereum is coming along nicely. Given its longer existence, that is Bitcoin, of course. Regulatory bodies have a clear understanding of Bitcoin and numerous regulatory compliant financial products that are available. I just mentioned strikes earlier on. I think they are led by or they were created by Jack Marla. I think that's his name. Some of the challenges from a regulatory point of view, as far as Bitcoin is concerned, is the scrutiny around Bitcoin primarily revolving around its use in illicit activities and environmental concerns due to its proof of work consensus mechanism. We know this debate about green energy and stuff is going to be ongoing because Bitcoin does require a lot of electricity, but not some of the numbers that are thrown about by people who are not in the know. And as far as illicit activities are concerned, come on, cash has been used in drug trafficking a lot. Talking of people not knowing where to put their money, you know, digging it underground and so forth. We have watched the documentaries on Netflix. I'm not going to mention who was involved, but you know what I'm talking about. What about Ethereum's regulatory clarity? Well, as a new asset, Ethereum faces a more evolving regulatory landscape. However, its use in a broader range of applications beyond just a digital currency presents a unique regulatory challenge and opportunity. As far as challenges are concerned, the issues for Ethereum include security law implications for tokens issued on its platform. But now we know that they actually said they will issue an Ethereum spot ETF. So maybe we are heading in the right direction, but we are not out of the woods yet, guys. So we need to remember main grounded keep our humility the transition to ethereum 2.0 and proof of stake may alleviate some environmental concerns which i think here yeah, that was a good shift some people don't see it like that but i think it was a good move that argument is now gone what about the arguments for which one is superior as far as the spot etfs are concerned hmm. interesting isn't it broader utility and use cases for ethereum for me anyway we're talking of diverse applications ethereum's ability to support smart contracts and dApps make it fundamentally more versatile than bitcoin Earlier on at the top of the video, I was talking about the internet. I think Ethereum 
is the next level of the internet as far as I'm concerned and any other layer one. This is what is going to be. They just need to talk to each other. This broader utility attracts a wider range of investors and users from developers building new blockchain solutions to businesses leveraging DeFi and NFTs. Ethereum is also an innovative ecosystem. The rapid growth of DeFi and NFTs on Ethereum demonstrates its capability to foster innovation and create new market segments. This dynamic ecosystem can drive long-term value and adoption beyond what Bitcoin offers is a store of value. Not that they are not trying to bring some layer tools to add all these things to Bitcoin. People are trying different things, but at a fundamental level, Bitcoin cannot support smart contracts and all these things that bring layer tools, which brings its own set of issues. And I can even fathom to go further and say the people who are going to be investing in Bitcoin, including Bitcoin Maxis, they are not going to bother with some of these things. It's only as crypto natives and some DJs and possibly some people who are coming to develop within the Bitcoin ecosystem who will actually see that as the way forward. But most people who are investing in Bitcoin, if they are looking at it as a store of value, why do they have to tinker and bother with layer tools? It's just my thought, thought that I had. And let's move on to the technological advancements on the Ethereum front. You got the Ethereum 2.0. This transition to Ethereum 2.0, which involves shifting from a proof of work to a proof of stake consensus mechanism, promises to improve scalability, even though we are yet to see it. But we can see some of the changes with you know within the layer two ecosystem. And then they are also talking of improving security and sustainability. This 2.0 upgrade is expected to enhance Ethereum's performance and reduce its environmental impact, making it more attractive to investors. Some were starting to see, but others like scaling the layer one itself. I don't think that will happen anytime soon. They need to break it at some point and then scale it or for it just to disappear as a competing technology and let the layer two take over. That might be the case in the end. Anyway, Ethereum's capability as well to support smart contracts. I think that is another strong, strong argument to be made. Ethereum's Turing complete language enables complex programmable contract allowing for automation and decentralization of various processes. This technological edge positions Ethereum as a foundational layer for Web3 and future decentralized applications. Now, there will be other technologies that might come and do a better job than Ethereum, but for now, I think Ethereum is still in the lead. Well, just look at the charts and look at the market cap and TVF. You'll get what I'm talking about. What about economic and financial potential? DeFi revolution for Ethereum. That is a massive one. Ethereum's role within the DeFi sector positions it at the center of a financial revolution by enabling decentralized lending borrowing and trading. Ethereum creates new financial opportunities and challenges traditional banking systems. We know it's already happening and they don't like it. Talking of tokenization and NFTs, the booming NFT market primarily built on Ethereum showcases the platform's ability to create and trade digital assets securely. This emerging market adds another layer of value and utility to Ethereum, attracting diverse investors and users. So, in conclusion, while both the Sport Bitcoin ETF and Sport Ethereum ETF offer valuable exposures to the link in cryptocurrencies, number one and number two. The Sport Ethereum ETF for me stands out in terms of fundamental. There is no doubt about it. Ethereum's broader utility, ongoing technological advancements, and role in pioneering DeFi and NFTs provides a compelling case for its superior long-term potential. Ethereum's versatility and innovation-driven ecosystem make it a more dynamic and potentially rewarding investment compared to Bitcoin, which primarily serves as a store of value. So you might end up getting people investing in the Ethereum ecosystem or into Ethereum, accumulate wealth, and then go to Bitcoin and store their value. That could end up being the narrative in the future. Now, back to you guys. I want to know what you think. Which port ETF do you think is going to come out on top? I've laid my case here. I think Ethereum, whether it's this cycle or after a couple of cycles or three cycles, I think this port Ethereum ETF has got a lot of legs, got a lot of potential, got a lot of traction. Bitcoin, I think it will reach a peak and then it just grows organically. They're on the end of this exponential growth of the Bitcoin ecosystem. So for those who have been waiting for the flipping, I think it's going to be flipping of a different kind. It will start maybe from this Port ETF arena, and then it extends the wider ecosystem. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section, guys. Until the next one, I'm your host, FD Positivity, signing out for the bank.